In today's video, we are going to be introducing derivatives, so if this is something you struggle with or interested in, keep watching. So we're going to bring it back to slope. Now when it came to identifying the slope of a line, there were mainly three ways that we can do this. For example, graphically, we can identify two solid points on the line and then calculate the rise over run between those two points and then that would give us a slope. Alternatively, if you were given two ordered pairs on the line, you can use the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, plug in those ordered pairs accordingly and then that would also give you the slope. And then another way would be if we were provided one of the equations of the line, such as slope intercept form, which is y equal to mx plus b, we can identify what the m is and then that would tell us what the slope is. So we had several ways that we can identify what the slope of the line is based on what was provided. Now when it came to slope, we learned that there's four types, which was positive, negative, zero, and undefined slope. And typically, when we were asked to find the slope, it would be a variation of one of the four. But you might notice a theme with all four of these types. And you can notice that all of these are a variation of a straight line of some sort. And we would classify these straight lines as what we call linear functions, with the exception of undefined because that's not a function. But the other types would be classified as linear functions. And when it came to finding the slope, we were really limited to these types of functions. But notice that we were never asked to find the slope of say like a parabola, but why? So with a parabola, if you notice the line is not straight, it's curvy. And when it comes to finding the slope of a curvy line, well these methods that we typically use such as the rise over run is just not gonna cut it. But you may ask why is it not gonna cut it? Well because when we were finding the slope of straight lines, the slope was constant, which is why we can pick out any two points and calculate the rise over run because the ratio would always be the same. But with a curvy line, the slope is not constant. It's actually changing everywhere. So the slope here and here are different. And unfortunately, we can't pick out any two points and calculate the rise over run because that value is not going to be constant and that's not going to provide us what the slope is of that line. So how would we be able to find the slope here or here? Or here well this is where the derivative comes in clutch now the derivative is basically an equation that allows you to calculate what the slope is of a function at any point so if you want to find the slope here or here or here you can use the derivative equation to find what that value is now when it comes to denoting the derivative there's several ways that we denote it so we can say that this is basically f of x equal to x squared. So to denote the derivative equation, we commonly say that it'll be f prime of x. Now you know we also interchange f of x and y a lot, so we can also say that this is y equal to x squared. They're both the same, but we just interchange f of x and y. So if we're given it in terms of y, we can also say that the derivative is y prime. And also if you're given it in terms of y, you'll also see dy all over dx. So You'll see these three ways that we denote the derivative equation, but they're all the same. They all mean the same thing. Now, the beautiful thing about the derivative is this doesn't have any limitations. When we use the rise over run method to calculate the slope, it was only limited to linear functions, right? But now with the derivative, it can apply to both linear and nonlinear functions. So what do I mean by nonlinear functions? These are really our curvy lines, right? So such as the parabola or the cubic function, or you can think of an exponential function or a logarithmic function or even a trig function or rational function. All those functions that you learned about back in pre-calculus or algebra, you can now calculate what the slope is of those functions at a particular point by using the derivative. Now to better understand the derivative, we're gonna be using a simple example. Now, without knowing the exact calculus techniques that you use to calculate the derivative, we're going to use the example of y equal to 2x plus 1. Now, this may look familiar, right? This is slope-intercept form, which is y equal to mx plus b. And we know that the m tells us what the slope is. So in this case, the m is 2. So this tells us that the slope of this line is going to be 2. 
So if we had to find what y prime is or what the derivative is, remember the derivative is basically an equation that tells us what the slope is of a function at any point. So in this case, if the m is 2, right? Well, y prime is going to be equal to 2 in this case because this tells us that if we wanted to find the slope at 1 or 10 or 5, well, it's going to tell us it's going to be 2. And in this case, it's going to be 2 everywhere because when you're given something in slope-intercept form, that means it's a linear function, which means the slope is always going to be constant. But that is a simple example to better understand what the derivative is doing. Of course, as you progress in the types of functions that you're dealing with, such as, say, polynomial functions or radical functions, it gets a little more complicated and that's when those calculus techniques are going to come in clutch. But this is essentially the principle of what the derivative is doing. It's providing us what the slope is at a particular point and it's basically an equation that allows you to plug in any x value that you want to calculate what the slope is at that particular point in time on the function. So pretty cool. So that is pretty much an introduction into derivatives. And derivatives is pretty much a vital piece, especially if you are taking calculus. I like to say it's one of the three pillars of calculus. Derivatives is a big pillar. <laughs> so this was a little introduction into the world of derivatives. And I hope this video was helpful and take care.